Hey everyone and welcome to group break number 104. Today we have a nice little hobby box battle here. Uh, we got 2020 series 1 versus 2020 series 2 or 2020 2021 series 1 versus 2020 2021 series 2. Uh, so six hobby boxes, half case of each. Gonna be a lot of fun. Um, obviously fairly solid mix. You get kind of all the um, young guns and stuff like that from the year. And obviously this year we'll have extended as well. So um, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be really fun. So, uh, let us know who you think is going to win. If you're watching on YouTube, let us know in the comments. If you're watching live on Twitch, just let us know. Uh, we'll go head to head box to box to clear a winner or a tie after each box and go from there. But anyways, let's get into the team random three times on the names, three times on the teams. Again, thank you everyone who picked up a spot. Um, looking forward to this break as one of the ones that I definitely, uh, Definitely excited about because we got massive rookie potential here. So uh, three times, let's go. Once, twice, and thrice. All right, Tyler on top, Brooks on the bottom, and three times on the teams. Here we go. Uh, once, twice, and thrice boston and ottawa are the top and bottom so ottawa's on top here we go good luck uh tyler you've got the ottawa centers bayo with the montreal canadians and la kings robert you've got the detroit red wings ryan you've got the sabers not bad andy with the vegas golden knights bill you've got the columbus blue jackets ted with the calgary flames Mark, you've got the Islanders again. Uh, Callum with the Nashville Predators. James with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Carl, you've got the Devils. Paul, you've got Chicago. That's probably going to be the like best team quantity-wise again. Uh, Ted with the Panthers. Bayo with the Avalanche. Kirk with the Arizona Coyotes. Dave with the St. Louis Blues. Dante with the Carolina Hurricanes. Ted with the Anaheim Ducks. Rocky with the Oilers and the Wild. Uh, Callum with the Canucks. Bayo with the Capitals. Chris, you've got the Rangers. Hopefully we get some laughs. Daniel with the Jets and Lightning. Shane with the Penguins. Uh, Anthony with the Flyers. Andy with the Sharks. Shane with the Stars. And Brooks with the Bruins. All right. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, Brent's a, a good, good dude. So uh, go back to the... Uh, Good old NHL 14 days. Actually, even even before that, to be honest. Uh, no, no, I guess NHL 14. Um, but yeah. All right. Here we go. Save that. Everything looks correct. So yeah, it's a, it's a fairly solid mix. Um, Again, if you're new to sports cards or hobby stuff in general, um, series one this year, you're mainly looking for laugh. Uh, series series two, you've got, um, whatchamacallit, like you've got Capri's off. Uh, series two is solid, like better throughout the thing, but um, like the overall checklist quality is better, but the high-end players in series one, I'd say, well, right now Capri's off is the highest between the two, but. Uh, you got better high-end potential out of Series 1, I think. You've got probably the best defenseman in Byram, and Laugh should end up being the best forward. But um, Also, do not sleep on Dallas. Do not sleep on Jason Robertson. He is a player that I've been I've been saying uh, since uh, probably the release of that, I guess, and even when we first started to check out because he is a very, very good player, and his stuff has skyrocketed, so... Um, yeah, we'll leave a couple minutes for trades. Not very long. I don't think, um, don't think we'll have any action today on trades, but I think we'll start off with series one just because we've done so much series two in the past week and a bit. So change it up, but we'll go box to box, whatever box wins that round. Uh, we'll start off the next round. So simple things here. But yeah. All right. Oh man, the hut trade days, those were... Those were good. All right. Well, hopefully we can hit a cousins for you. That that sounds you know weird if you take it out of context, but all right. Let's get started. 
it's uh but yeah solid mix i really like the overall mix uh overall breakdown of the product so um especially mixing series one and series two if you missed it at the start of the week we had a pretty actually insane break between uh last year's series two and this year's series two um it was really really good like just top to bottom really solid so uh here we go box one again all the major young guns we will top load and sleeve along the way um honestly jason robertson's worked his way up into an instant top load and sleeve in my opinion but you know that's just that's just me here we go let's get started uh french variation of stamp kills for the lightning right out of the gate one thing you will notice between Series 1 and Series 2 is Series 1 has more uh, unique subsets and inserts, whereas Series 2 is a lot more update styles, um, which is, again, kind of just the premise of both products. Predominant of Sebastian Ajo for the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, and even then, uh, like, so you have the NHL Worldwide, uh, the Dazzlers, the debut dates, uh, what else, rookie retrospectives. Yeah, Series 1, you'll notice a lot of different cards. Series 2, you'll notice a lot more rookie content. Uh, starting off with Kurashev for Chicago on the Young Guns. Again, Chicago will probably end up with like 20 cards, 25 cards, something like that. They got a lot of Young Guns between the two products this year. So they have six in Series 2 alone, and I think they have like two or three in Series 1, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Portraits of Eichel for the Sabres. Will he be a member of the Sabres at the end of the year? Apparently the asking price is four first round picks. And honestly, like, that's not a bad price. <laughs> that's pretty fair. Uh, NHL Worldwide of Matthews for the Leafs. Also, the weirdest card that we pulled yesterday was definitely outside of the, uh, the blank piece of paper in the pack. Uh, was the Joe Thornton program of excellence canvas? Because they go to current team and it's just like, wait, that's a Leafs card. Uh, Wierenski for the Blue Jackets on the canvas. So, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Hopefully a laugh today. Hopefully a Byram. I mean, again, I'd love to see a Young Gun exclusives but or better. But, you know, temper expectations. Malkin for the Penguins on the Worldwide. Yeah, I, I think it's a mistake, but also I don't, like, I don't know. Um, Sagan for the stars on the Dazzlers. It really depends on what that return is. Um, you know, I think there's a legitimate case that that team is just needs a lot of stuff. And, you know, Kiki for the Hurricanes on the Young Guns. That team needs a lot of help, and like I hope Rasmus Dahlin gets up to form. I don't know what happened to him over the past couple of years, but like his rookie year, he was so good, and then the past like season and a half, really, he's like just looks like a totally different player. So Quinn Hughes for the Canucks. But, um, yeah, I I feel like. Uh, Jeff Skinner, if they can find a way to get rid of him, it might cost them stuff, but if they can find a way to get rid of him, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they do that. Uh, Velarde for the Kings on the rookie portraits. Obviously, it's a big salary, but I think Jeff Skinner's a player that you know in the right situation with some retention and depending on what you're getting back. True for the Sharks on the Young Guns depending on what you're getting back if and how much they're retaining not the worst uh player to go after so uh sebastian Ajo for the hurricanes like there's still a player in there next pack uh kratzoff for the rangers on the young guns He's looking like he's going to debut soon, which is good. Ooh, we got our first clear card. Ah, uh, Shifley for the Jets on the uh, clear cut. Uh, 
Yeah, I I don't know who will end up in Seattle from Buffalo. There's actually some intriguing names, but uh, Jack Hughes for the Devils on the rookie retrospective. Again, like, um, depending on what they're willing to give up to take Jeff Skinner and, like, retain if they retain salary on him, like, I wouldn't be opposed to that. McDavid for the Oilers on the portraits. You know, I think I think you can probably get some really good stuff from Buffalo just because both cap hit wise and um, you know situation wise they're probably going to try and move on from him. So Adam Fox on the debut dates for the Rangers. But that uh that expansion draft I am very excited for. Uh, Kachuk for the Flames on the predominant. That is definitely something that I have spent way too much time looking into. Ooh, we got a, a clear cut coming up here. Let's see what it is. It's uh, centered in this. Uh, okay, that's, uh, those are all base. And then clear cut foundations uh, duos of Bertuzzi and Mantha for Detroit. Uh, most expensive card is the Laugh High Gloss. Uh, whether it's your clear cut exclusives Young Gun, which is like an Easter egg, essentially same print run as a High Gloss, or the Laugh Young Gun High Gloss. Um, that is like when the product released, there were 14 or 15. I know there is at least 10,000, but I think I saw like a 14 or $15,000 bounty on it. So, but I know at least there is a 10K bounty on it, which was crazy so that is typically though in series one you're looking for like in hobby um yeah these cards are stuck together it hasn't been that long course call for the leafs on the young guns uh the most expensive cards though are like your high-end young guns so like your laughs um in series one byram is probably not super high-end yet but um i think he'll get up there especially if the market kind of Continues with the defenseman. There's a good one. Josh Norris for the Senators. Uh, I think Norris... I'm going to start sleeving and um, top-loading Norris. I think he's very good, so... There we go. I I like Norris a lot, so I think long-term he's a good, good player. But yeah, you're looking for your high-gloss young guns. Like, any young gun parallel is good. Um, obviously... High glosses are extremely tough to pull. And like even bad players, they're still good pulls type of thing. So uh, this is just a Latang for the Penguins on the base. Sorry, the base is all sticking together already. It hasn't been long enough for that to happen. <laughs> so box one, I'd say okay. Nothing like fancy, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary Marner for the Leafs on the portraits but beatable because I mean you've got like decent young guns Norris is solid but I think you got ones that you can like it's beatable because the clear cut foundations it's a cool card but their sale value isn't great also just like I don't know if it caught it on camera but like the edge of the cards can sometimes have some chipping on them it is extremely common with those so just because anything that any card that has kind of um, like isn't white on the edge or if it's a clear card and it's got like um, any sort of color printed on it, it's just really easy to chip. So, but yeah, normally the clear cut young guns are okay. I guess cause they're die cut that it makes it a little bit harder. Yeah, these series two boxes feel like they're just a little bit more tightly packed somehow. Uh, you sometimes can, it very rarely happens in Series 1. Series 2, about two packs per box have it. Uh, back in, like, 2011-12, I think that might have been the last year they did it, where you got, like, multiple stuff in Series 2, but, yeah. I think you'll see right here you can get multiple in uh, Series 2. White for the Senators, and Kershev on the Rookie Dazzlers for Chicago. Uh, Rocky, you're gonna be happy with your teams. I think as long as we hit a, uh, as long as we hit a laugh, you'll or laugh, sorry, Caprizov, you'll be really happy. 
Uh, well, Ryan, there you go. Dylan Cousins on the Young Guns. He kind of eluded us last night till the very end, but shows up. Shows up early today. That's a good sign. And uh, not really stand. I wouldn't say he's stand worthy, but he's still good. So. Uh, Bell's heel for the Habs uh, on the rookie portraits. But yeah, this year series two, they typically get 26 hits per box. So, uh, Turkoff on the young guns for the blue jackets. So you'll get one pack that has a canvas and a dazzlers and one that normally has, I think a portraits and a French variation. Uh, street variation of Patrick Kane for Chicago. That's a street clothes image variation of Kane for Chicago. Those are a little bit tougher to hit. They seem to fall about two per case or so. But yeah, those are image variations that are, and tougher to hit, cool cards, but Belzeal for the Habs on the blue OPG rookie. Yeah, the variations are cool cards, tougher to hit. Um, their value, ironically, compared to previous years, has gone down just because they're easier to identify. Skinner for the Oilers on the rookie portraits. Whereas last year, they were actually like decent in value because they were very hard to identify. And so people that wanted those specific cards, you know, couldn't find them. Uh, Bobby Ryan for the Senators. The rarest card we could pull out of Series 2, I think, is the uh, uh, Gibson for the Ducks on the canvas. The rarest card we could pull out of Series 2, though, is the Brodeur canvas signatures. And, like, I've already seen two of them pulled at least, so. Krebs for Vegas on the OPG Rook. Picked up his blank back rookie yesterday. I am excited for that. Those are extremely tough pulls. So very, very happy with that pickup. Uh, Zagadulin for the Flames on the retro. So a bit of a like, okay start cousin to Series 2. I think it's just going to win because I think Cousins is probably the best young gun between the two. Uh, Cole Smith for Vegas. Or, sorry, for Nashville. Why did I say Vegas? Probably because Cody Glass is right behind them. But I think Series 2 is going to get on the board first just based off the better Young Gun and the variation in um, Hagel for Chicago on the Young Guns. Yeah, I think the Young Guns in this are probably a little bit better. And I think the Kane variation is better value-wise than the Clear Cut, even though the Clear Cut is probably rarer. So... Uh, Joseph Wolf for the Leafs. No problem. And love to talk about cards, so especially hockey cards. The Tim sets are honestly like really nice for getting people back into collecting and just stuff to trade around. So uh, Van Check for the Capitals on the rookie. And honestly, they have like literally the uh, the red die cuts um, from Tim's are some of my favorite cards out there. So. Uh, it's really funny because if they did an entire set like that, I think it'd be really cool. Fabry for the Red Wings. But I guess we do have metal coming out this year, metal universe. So that should be similar to that. But we will see. So uh, Regula for the Hawks on the rookie. Uh, I don't think we put the French variation yet. So I have to go back through the base if we don't get it in the box. But Robertson for the Leafs on the Retro Rookie. And the biggest thing this year with Series 2 is that there's no um, Kaprizov and Stutzla's like OPG rookies and stuff are going to be aren't in this. They're typically you see them in it, but they're not. Uh, Harley for the Stars on the OPG Rookie. So that means they're probably going to be in UD Extended, which is a new product this year. Um, that comes out, it's slated to come out in uh, Jul, June, sorry, like mid-June. Uh, we have Ingram for the 
Predators, and a French Young Gun variation of Kivlenix for uh, Columbus. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, um, like, honestly, like, it's pretty, uh, like, they do a really good job with that set, so. And, like, even, like, the Canadian Tire set that was around. I don't think it is anymore, but uh, Gage Quinney for Vegas on the Young Guns. That was also a good set, so. And Barzell for the Islanders. Yeah, the Tim stuff, like I went, I probably opened up like 200 of it, not this year, but last year, just with all the shows and stuff, they were really popular at card shows. So, uh, cause people were trying to put their sets together. So Latuna for the Sharks. So it just gave me, you know, stuff to help people complete their sets. Um, especially with like base stuff, which, you know, just kind of, if people needed base cards, they could just grab them type of thing. Uh, Ingram on the fluorescence for the Predators. So Nashville, not really one of the strongest teams, but not a bad start for them. So uh, yeah, definitely win the series two to start us off here. French Young Gun variation, fluorescence. I think that just straight up beats anything that series two has to offer. So we are calling this one nothing for series two. Yeah, if you're looking to get into cards again, um, some of the best products if you're looking for value and just fun opening, excuse me, are uh, Series 1 and Series 2 retail. Because Young Guns, at the end of the day, are like the bread and butter of hockey cards. It is like they will always maintain their the most value. They will always maintain or like kind of be the most, I would say, liquid, um, like easiest to sell and move type cards. Um, they typically go up at a better, at a quicker rate than other cards. So, oh, the, the hands are, uh, the hands aren't super bad anymore. They used to be, but not anymore. Uh, Colasar for Vegas on the Young Guns. Uh, in this Boston, Boston's one of the weaker teams, I would say. You're kind of hoping for like, a super short print type hit. I think they don't have day with the cup flashbacks. Uh, Burdeen for the Jets on the rookie portraits. So you're looking for like, I think they have Fanimations in series one, but yeah, they don't have any rookies this year. Last year they were a really good team because they had a lot of rookies, but, but yeah. Uh, anyways, back to the getting into card stuff. Uh, Dumbo for the wild on the OPG update. Uh, series one and series two retail are generally like my go-to recommendations just because value wise, content wise, it's kind of the best bang for your buck. It's what a lot of people open up. It's fun, um, McAvoy for the Bruins. And the difference from retail to hobby is hobby has the, um, hobby has always been about, um, you know, typically you're looking for the parallels and stuff like that, Robertson for the Leafs. Uh, so like the Young Guns exclusives, the high glosses, the clear cuts, the French parallels. You can't get those in retail, um, but you do get, in, especially with Series 2, all the updated rookie content, and you still have the same odds at Young Guns. So, uh, Ant Whistle Rent Retro for Chicago. Uh, I mean, our store would be a good place to start, but the one thing with product this year is that it does dry up really quickly. Um, so, we've actually had to put raffles in for stuff just because everyone wants to get their hands on it. So, uh, Alex. Xander True on the rookie portraits. So I will just uh, uh, I will show it after this box. Actually, I can just, yeah, I'll show it after this box. I'll show it after the box and then drop a link. Um, it depends, like it really depends. Some stores carry them, some stores don't. We do, but um, again, there's a raffle for them at the start. Um, Marchment for the Panthers, so just because it's everything's in really high demand right now, like um, everything from group break spots to uh, to you know um, just cards in general. Atkinson for the Blue Jackets on the canvas, Bertuzzi for the Red Wings on the Dazzlers. So um, I 
everything's in really high demand, it's really tough to find product in stock right now. That looks like a Minnesota Wild jersey, but I'm not gonna jinx it. But it is. Rocky, you got two last week. Here's another one. Another Kirill the Thrill. That is the best young gun to get this year right now, so uh, yeah. Mark had the laughs, but you get the Kirills, so. I think my favorite part of uh, s sorting through cards sometimes is like seeing, you know, how you guys do against each other. Uh, variation of Vasileski for the Lightning. So image variation there. Well, it's honestly like it's gonna take laugh plus to beat this box. So it's doable, but series two looking to go up too low well here. Uh, but Daniel, you got, I think you had Tampa and Winnipeg. Yeah. Uh, Gills Sen for the Devils on the Rookie Blue. Uh, Tampa's not horrible. Hardly for the Stars on the Rookie. I mean, they're not the best team by any means, but... If you hit a day, if we hit a day with the cup somehow, that'd be wicked. So, uh, ant whistle for Chicago. Considering this is the back half of one that we hit a day with the cup flashback of, I think that's going to be tough. But we'll see. You have cow foot though. Ah, uh, well, that's a good young gun canvas for the Canucks. Hoaglander. Nice little Hoaglander canvas there. Callum, there you go. That one gets, all right, well, it's, it is going to take like literally a top end young gun parallel from series, uh, here, I'll put series two hits on this side. Kind of divide them in the middle here. There we go. But yeah, it's gonna take a heck of a box from uh, series one to beat series two. Yep. Uh, if you're on Twitch, actually, there should be a link to our store below on like our or on our main page. So if you're ever wondering, feel free to go check it out. Ingram for the Predators on the Marquee Rookie. Uh, how do we get the French variation? I don't think we have yet. Uh, Retro of Reduke for Vegas. Retro Rookie. Awesome. Uh, Braden Burke for the Yotes on the Young Guns. Uh, Reduke for Vegas on the Rookie. Broberg for the Oilers and French variation of Pierre Luc Dubois for Columbus. Probably one of his last Columbus cards printed. But yeah, really good box here. Uh, Kaprizov and Hoaglander on the canvas is just crazy. Angelo for the Penguins on the Young Guns. And another image variation. Actually, we hit it. Both our image variations, we've hit two image variations in two boxes. That's actually really weird. <laughs> oh, for sure. I feel you there. Ryan Ellis for Nashville. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, as much as it's nice that card values have gone up with the boom in the hobby, box values have gone up as well, kind of, so. Uh, Milosh for the Sharks on the Young Guns. Yeah, Campbell's look solid. These look really solid for the Leafs. And a uh, jersey card to finish this off. Uh, Alexander True for the Sharks. Here, I'll kind of shuffle these around a little bit better. And there we go, True for the Sharks. And so that is going to be a tall, tall, tall task for Series 1 to beat. Like, just putting it out there. 
you've got to beat Hoaglander and Kaprizov and have a better card than the image variation. Like, good luck. It's possible, but... Oh, and Team Viewer. There we go. Uh, yeah, we pulled two young guns and then uh, OPG rookie, or sorry, artifact rookie out of 999, artifact rookie out of 299, and then the checklist young gun. All right, here we go. So it is like you can get on crazy runs with boxes, so. But let's see what's in box or pack one at least. McKinnon for the abs. I just think for series one here, if you care about winning the battle, you kind of hope it has like, you know, not the best crop, but solid type of thing. Like, you know, don't waste your good box against the best box of like literally one of the best boxes of series two. Burdine for the Jets. At the same time, if it's an insane box, it's an insane box and it's great for the break. So, you know. Um, French variation of Applicator for the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, that was the uh, Artifact Series 2, or sorry, Series 1 mixer. That was fairly early after the return to breaks. Predominant of Seth Jones for the Blue Jackets. I guess a Makar Auto would make this interesting. Could make it interesting. McKinnon for the abs on the portraits. Uh, debut dates coming up here of Cody Glass for Vegas. Mark Stone for Vegas on the Dazzlers. Well, there's a checklist for the Rangers of Laugh and Kratzoff. So obviously not the true, which you're hoping to get, but eh, it's not the worst. For, for a young gun checklist, it's probably one of the higher valued ones. But there's still like, I'd still rather have a regular base young gun. I will always prefer a regular base young gun to the checklist. And I will say that every single break. I wish the that they were extras. Uh, pass track for the Bruins on the NHL Worldwide. Because the checklist just never really keep their value long term. So gets left for the Ducks. even if it's like the best possible players on it. Kiefer Bellows for the Islanders, not horrible, I think. I think he's been doing okay for them this year. Zabanjad for the Rangers on the canvas. A uh, jersey of Kuznetsov for the Capitals. Yeah, the bots are just out in full force, eh? Uh, we've had two in two days here. So, I think it's because I put a couple extra tags in and once they make their way around to certain channels, they, they just stay there. Uh, Tatar for the Habs on predominance. Hey, I want to be famous too, but I think buying followers is uh, not the way to do it. McMichael for the Caps. Uh, honestly, probably a 
right now not the biggest name, but long term could be solid. Uh, a little bit of a soft corner. Actually, this, yeah, a little bit of a soft corner. The left edge looks a little weird, but like just kind of right there, there's a little bit of a weird discoloration. Nothing like major, but Crosby for the Penguins on the portraits. So yeah, like it's a it's a solid box, but it's not one that like you know, unless we hit an insane laugh parallel here that we're gonna go crazy about. Uh, Fox for the Rangers on the rookie retrospective. Adam Fox's stock went up, by the way, which is great. If you, you know, got some of his stuff. Darlene for the Sabres on the canvas. He's definitely one of my, like, picks to go up. So, Foodie for the Blue Jackets. So, like, solid young guns here, but nothing, like, major. Uh, we got one of the die cuts, the four year or the worldwide die cuts of Dry Sidle for the Oilers. There you go, Rocky. That one's yours. I love these cards. Like, they're really nice. Um, they do have some, sometimes a little bit of chipping or cutting issues, but they're a little bit, they're on the thicker stock too, which I like. So, they're just a pain to top load sometimes. But, so again, like, Solid series two or series one box, but series two just crushes it. Like there's you just can't compete with Caprizov and Hoaglander if you don't hit laugh, so but hey, could still happen. Barkov for the Panthers on the portraits. Like again, it's been a like good solid box with good names on the young guns, but nothing nothing spectacular, so Larmy for the Penguins on the Young Guns. But yeah, the die cuts on the For Your Countries are really nice. You can actually see the top's got some, it's hard to see with the light reflecting on it, but you can see the top's got some chipping issues, so. But again, it is just the color of card and quick for LA on the canvas. Just the color of the card and the fact that it's die cut, it's gonna be a little bit more prone to that type of stuff, so more edges and whatnot and worldwide of tatar for the habs yeah series one came out in november and then series two came out two weeks ago so two nothing for series two uh typically series one has like the the top like the first overall pick so it has laugh and then series two kind of has like the more like typical rookies in previous year series one has generally been the better of the two um, but last year series two is better than series one and honestly this year i think it's probably going to end up being that series two is uh it'll be it'll be close i yeah it'll be close i think there's a lot of people that are still slept on in series one right now but like Krebs isn't super highly valued yet. McMichael could boom. So, all right, let's see what uh what we've got in store here from series two. We've already hit a Kaprizov. Let's see a Stutzla and a Cousins actually. We've hit two of the bigger names. So, Korshkov for the Leafs on the rookie portraits. Yeah, typically it's like Series 1 comes out early November and then Series 2 comes out like mid-February. It's just, it was different this year given the delay to the start of the season. Uh, dry settle for the Oilers. So Series 2 came out about a month, I'd say a month and a half later than what it normally does. Because, you know, they got to get rookies in, right? So Forsberg for the Predators on the canvas. I'm wearing a Philip Forsberg shirt right now. Uh, so this year they're going to have a UD extended set. Uh, they never do a set specifically focused on playoffs, but 
Um, typically what happens if a player like, so for example, Trevor Zegris and Jamie Drysdale are good examples. Broberg for the Oilers, they debuted late and it looks like it's past their rookie cutoff. So typically if it's past the rookie cutoff, you'll see them next year in series one or series two. Um, but yeah, this year there's a, essentially what's going to be a series three with UD extended. Uh, Braden Burke for the Yotes on the up er, retro rookie. Um, it's it's like an extra set. Um, they'll probably cover the trade deadline maybe in it. I'm not sure, but it'll be interesting to see kind of what that set looks like. So Mikolo for the Blues. They've never done something. They haven't done something like that in, oh, I don't know. I don't know when Upper Deck's done a product like that. So but it'll be a cool set, a nice little update set to kind of get us caught up on the year. Bear ban off for the Leafs on the Young Guns. So, but nothing ever really playoff uh, specific, just because by the time you do something playoff uh, specific, like you have to A, have the pictures and then get it to print. And if there's autograph cards or anything like that, McLeod for the Oilers on the portraits, uh, like that takes more time. And then you've got to ship it. And it's just the amount of time. And then all of a sudden, like by the time you're shipping it, it's, you know, next year's year already. So you'll see like some playoff themed cards in sets. Uh, Larmy for the Penguins. Typically you'll see like uh, in series two, for example, there's day with the cups, which are super tough to hit, but they focus on Tampa Bay winning the cup. So um, yeah, check for the flames. So you'll generally see it referenced the year after, but not, not the current year. Uh, Lawrence for the Hurricanes. That being said, this year, uh, no, this year it's still too late. Cause yeah, uh, back corner of that card's really bent. Hopefully nothing else in here is. Doesn't look like it. Presky for the Panthers. Yeah, next year's rookie crops looking solid as long as you know certain players debut. Um, you know, if Byfield debuts at all, uh, Delandria for the Stars on the blue rookie. If Byfield debuts at all for the Kings, um, I mean you've already got Zegras and Drysdale for Anaheim next year. That's going to be wicked, assuming they don't get printed and extended. But uh, Angelo for the Penguins. I'm assuming that Upper Deck's going to stick very strictly to their uh, their 12th, the uh, February 12th cutoff. So players had to debut before then. Uh, Hack and Pop for the Ducks on the Young Guns. And yeah, I think next year we're going to have some really solid players. Should be a good crop. I'm excited for it. Uh, Samson off for the Capitals and Ingram for the Predators on the Dazzlers. If like I'm a very analytical person when it comes to sports cards. And honestly, like this year's series two had the potential to be massive. Uh, Sorokin for the Islanders, it's still good, but like we almost got Zegris, we almost got Kaliev. Kaliev will be an extended. Um, we uh, could have had Byfield. Um, who else could we have had? There's definitely like a fair number of players that could have, you know, seen a game or two right so ooh, we got our box filler for the san jose sharks of evander kane so there we go nice little box filler case hit there of kane for the shark so solid box Oop, that's the wrong size there we go so solid box, Sorokin's a good young gun, um, but quiet, like definitely beatable. I don't think we've hit the French variation yet. Uh, you'll levy for the Canucks and Zajac on the French variation for the Devils. Sometimes the box fillers come with the uh, clear cut Young Gun as well. Lawrence for the Hurricanes. So like it could be an insane box, but we'll find out. A few packs left. I love the box filler inserts. Those are, those are nice. 
Here we got a young gun canvas coming up. Who's it gonna be? Romanov for the Habs. That's another good one. I think we'll leave uh we'll leave Hoaglander up just because a little ah uh, no, we'll switch them out. Eh, they're, they're about the same, but we'll switch out. Get one. Get one a little bit more love in there. You had your time to shine, Hoaglander. Romanov, you're up. So, all of a sudden, really good box. <laughs> uh, De Rosier for the Panthers on the Young Guns. Yeah, box two is uh, really good. All right, I think we have, we might have the clear cut here. We do. Uh, clear cut Young Gun of Mikola for the Blues. This is extremely warped actually it's it's misprinted um whoever has the blues that is uh you'll you'll notice it uh dave uh the upper deck logo is actually shifted about i don't know half a centimeter like the whole card's kind of shifted a little bit so uh, it is one of the like better quality photos on it though from this year there's definitely been some photo issues but yeah, I mean, at least we hit it, so. There we go. Uh, clear cut, young gun. So, like, not a big name, but, like, obviously you're hoping that to be one of the big names. But he's a everyday player, I think, for the Blues right now. Close to. So, Joseph for the Penguins. It's, like, not the best box not the worst box it's definitely beatable uh if it's misprinted like typically it's tough but like it's not as big as what it used to be um sometimes yes but for the most part no just the fact it's a clear cut is what makes it the most valuable because they're one per case so uh, you know with 50 young guns in the set that means you'd have to open up in theory 50 cases to get each one so just the amount of you know the cost to get them kind of you know it makes them more expensive just because they're rare all right good enough i think series one's got a chance here uh decent young gun and one other nice card and i think it should uh like i haven't checked what box fillers go for so i actually keep meaning to but forget to so Vrana for the capitals like if there's a laugh it just wins don't get me wrong i love love the cards in the last box but laugh is just better and the overall young guns weren't super strong so uh, Di Pietro for the Canucks. That's a good start. Good start for the box of Series 1. Uh, right now it's Kaprizov. I believe, yeah. Uh, Aho for the Hurricanes on the Dazzlers. Uh, right now it's Kaprizov. Laugh was technically the highest. Because um, he had the highest like individual sale. However, he's cooled off a lot. Because um, his performance, again, it always happens, though. They're normally cool off a lot. Um, Zabanjad for the Rangers. Just because he's 19, if he's not putting up big points, everyone's going to be like, oh, no, what's happened to him? But he'll be fine. It's his first year in a pro league. So Harley for the Stars. All right, two good young guns. But, yeah, I think Laugh will end up being, like, He'll be one of the ones that you'll see kind of some weird price ranging from his uh, from his cards. Like you'll see his higher end ones probably sell in the same range as Caprizov, but his lower end ones not. Try to settle for the Oilers, just because Rangers are a more popular team than the Wild. But then again, I mentioned this with Caprizov, and even in the off season before the draft lottery, um, he would go for the Panthers on the predominant. It's the first time the Wilds have ever had the top, like, have ever had a top rookie is this year. Like, if they got laughed, it would have been the first time. And then Kaprizov's turned out to be legitimately one of the best rookies. So, 
Oh, French variation of Harley for the stars. All right. That beats out the Mikolo, in my opinion. I think Harley's just A, a better player, and even though it's a tougher uh, set. So, and I think Harley and uh, Di Pietro combined are probably, they're not quite at Sorokin yet, but they're pushing them. Good, good start here. You like to see it. Uh, Natus on the rookie retrospective for the Hurricanes. He's been crazy. Although it is really funny seeing rookie retrospective for Natus when his rookie card was in 1718. So, Soderstrom for the Yotes. Another solid young gun. High pick. Fairly talented defenseman but plays in Arizona, so won't get as much love as some other players do. Cuchero for the Lightning on the portraits. Uh, looks like we got a debut dates coming up here. Yep, uh, Primo for the Habs. He was really hot value-wise last year, but I think he's cooled off as well. Uh, Joel Thornton for the Sharks on the predominant. For the Sharks. Again, this product was pretty much printed before. Uh, it was printed before the free agency. So you'll see some players have changed teams. And even in Series 2, actually, you'll see some players that have changed teams since printing. Oh, my gosh. These are all stuck. Uh, it's a young gun. Broberg for the Oilers. Again, like another solid one. Not the biggest name, but high pick. So there's always hype around high picks. And if he turns out to live up to his draft status, then hey, that's a that's a good pull. Alright, what have you got up next here? Probably a jersey card. Yep. Uh, Elias Lindholm for the Flames. Lindholm for the Flames. Go, oh, come on, get the part. There we go. One of the most tedious part. Jack Hughes for the Devils on the portraits. Sometimes the base cards just stick together, so it happens. It's a little tedious, but it happens. Normally, not when the product is this new. Crosby for the Penguins on the worldwide. There we go. Yeah, I'd say like two, three, down, two, three years down the road, Laugh will probably end up still being the highest. He'll end up being the highest valued rookie. He won't be right now, but two, three years down the road, probably. Uh, Frank Kuz on the Young Gun canvas for the Avalanche. Again, not horrible. Uh, all the base being stuck together is slightly annoying, but I think they still need a big hit here to make up for the like yeah it still needs a big hit it's close but kyle connor on the pink dazzlers for the jets need one big young gun here would be nice but it's been a really solid box overall top to bottom so uh you'll levy for the canucks again high pick so obviously Hasn't lived up to the hype, but that's not really always the player's fault. So. Oh, like, there's definitely cards that beat Gretzky rookies sale value-wise. Flurry for the Vegas Gold Knights. Um, just, like, as some examples, like, Crosby rookie patch. Like, Shield 1 of 1s will beat Gretzky rookies. Um, probably not a PSA 10 Gretzky rookie, but... I guess if it's Crosby's rookie shield, then it actually probably has a chance. Count for the Avs on the rookie portraits. But there's definitely uh, there's definitely cards that can beat Gretzky rookie cards, so they exist. They're really tough to hit, but Ustamenko for the Flyers on the Young Guns. And last pack, so 
Uh, might honestly be a tie. Uh, I mean, I still kind of lean series two, but. Uh, Sam Steele for the Ducks. It's, I don't know. Uh, young gun wise, this was much better overall. Series two had the better top end young gun. Um, oh, and they had a better canvas. And it's just, it's series two. Yeah, I mean, the Gretzky's well known because it's it's when, like, 79, 80 is kind of when cards weren't as... I mean, the print run's probably less than what it this is, but... Or, it's sorry, it's probably more than what this is, but the condition of the cards is what matters then because, like, the print quality wasn't as high. So, like, if you have a really, really, like, perfect condition Gretzky, those go for a lot. Whereas one that's in rougher shape isn't, you know worth as much so I've got a PSA 7 tops which I am very happy with so I bought that before the boom happened which was very good for me so by the way I think we're calling this three uh three nothing for uh series two right now so series one's got some work to do but yeah all it takes is a couple good boxes and right back in it. Vanacek for the Capitals. They definitely had a chance last box, but I think, um, um, I think just top to bottom, it was probably, it's really close. But I would say the Romanov Young Gun Canvas puts it over the top. Hellebuck for the Jets. Uh, a new small for the Senators. Is that, that's our second French gun gun? Is that our third? I think it's our second. So. Uh, Byron for the Avs. On the marquee rookie. Vanacek on the retro for the Capitals. Yeah, uh, we haven't hit really the two big young guns in series one yet though, so hopefully we can hit one of them in the next couple boxes. Joseph Vol on the blue for the Leafs. Actually, I should have started a new pile for the uh, inserts. That would have been smart. Uh, rookie portraits of Robertson for the Leafs. Sure, let's do that. Where did we end off? We ended off um, at the steel. I'm just going to make a new pile here so it doesn't get overloaded. There we go. But yeah, uh, I think like Crosby Young Guns are pr still going up steadily in value. Um, because as people start buying them up, there's less and less available type of thing. So Pogansky for the Blues on the Young Guns. All right, we got our Dazzlers and Canvas, I think. Uh, Braden Point for the uh, Lightning. And, well, there's a good firearm program of excellence for the Colorado Avalanche, Bowen Byram. Uh, you've got a Harley French young gun, a base French or base Harley young gun. Um, so some solid stuff, but nothing major. All right. I'm sorry, but I like Bowen Byram too much. He's, uh, he's going in the middle. There we go. Come on, right in the middle. There we go. That's a nice looking card with a nice little captaincy on them. That's a uh, that's a good card. And again, it's going to be tough for series one. I mean, you can beat it with the regular. Oh well, okay, never mind. Stutzla Young Gun for the Senators. It's going to take. It, this might be just game over here. This legitimately just might be game over for series one. 
there we go. Uh, well, those are two packs that are uh, change everything. I'm not the honestly, I'm not the biggest. Oh my gosh, a fluorescent, a, a numbered fluorescent, which is a big deal. Key for Bellows, 23 of 150 for the Islanders. So that's like three really good cards in a row. I mean, Bellows, again, isn't the biggest name. You could get bigger names on this checklist, but still solid. Not stand, uh, honestly, like he, he just beats the clear cut foundations. So this is just a series two show right now. That is like three packs right there that had like it, could you imagine if that was like Laugh or uh, Kaprizov or Byram or just anyone else? Uh, Pino for the Capitals on the Young Guns. But wow, uh, heck of a box here. <laughs> this is nasty. Uh, Shellman for the Sharks on the Young Guns. Just crazy. Like, yeah, you're not really gonna get that many better boxes than this. Uh, Larmy for the Penguins on the Rookie Portraits. Khrushchev for the Blackhawks on the Marquee Rookie. Yeah, heck of a box here. Uh, what's, is this just a regular canvas? Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's the checklist. So we do have a random here between Calgary and Ottawa. Uh, if we do somehow get a second one of these uh, between Tyler and Ted, if we do get a second one of these, it'll be, uh, you'll both get one. But for right now, that'll be a random. So on the Chuck Brother Canvas checklist. Marchment for the Panthers on the Rookie. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, I don't see how Series 1 is going to beat this, but it's doable. It is doable. Harley for the stars on the Rookie, the Rookie Retro. It is beatable, but it is going to be tough. Uh, Coughlin for Vegas on the marquee rookie. I knew that canvas card looked different though because it's just stuck out a little bit more. Shane Bowers for the Avalanche and Amadio for the Kings on the French variation. Yeah, this is uh, this is just a bloodbath here. Series two is just cleaning up. Cal foot for the lightning on the young guns. Like literally it's gonna take, you gonna need laugh plus in the series one box to beat this. Or I guess a Byron parallel would work. Um, like there, there are ways for it to win. Dumbo for the wild, but it is very tough. Mitchell for Chicago on the Young Guns. Yeah, Chicago's gonna have their regular stack of hits. Um, there we go. So we just had a pop up. I don't know what we've got here. Uh, ooh, uh, just regular clear cut of Darren Helm for the Red Wings. Okay. Regular clear cut to finish things off there. That's not bad. Not bad. Pop the team viewer back up. And thank you for all the feedback on the team viewer too. It looks like everyone's really enjoying it. So I'm just having a quick drink of water and got to adjust my chair. There we go. It's in a little bit too low to the ground there. I feel my knee starting to bunch up a little bit. <laughs> I guess I could do the break standing up if I wanted to. <laughs> That'd be fun. Might try that out one day. All right, here we go. Let's see if uh, 
I'll just see if it's game over right here. If uh, Series 2 just wins the battle right now and then the last two are for sport. Or if uh, Series 1 can put some serious pressure on. We're going to need a laugh, Young Gun. Uh, at the very least. And... Ugh. I don't, I don't know what else, but I would say at least like just on a regular like level, probably a laugh young gun and a good canvas. French variation of Kessel for the Yotes. There we go. So no French variation young gun. That kind of takes that the window to that sale. Uh, predominant of Matthews for the Leafs. Yeah, I mean, like, I honestly thought it would be a little bit closer than this, but Series 2 is just cleaning up. McLeod for the Oilers. I think that's a good sign. If I remember my crops correctly, I think that is a good sign. Shabbat for the Senators. There are some there are some cards that would uh, swing this in in the favor of series one. Samsonov for the Capitals. But we'll uh, we'll see. Again, a laugh young gun makes us close. Laugh and Stutzla are on par. So price for the halves on the canvas. But again, like top to bottom, that box of series two was just really good. Cause like the fluorescence is solid. They're not the highest value, but in terms of like cool cards, they're tough. And you also have the base clear cut if we're really getting down into the nitty gritty. Whereas looking for Columbus on the NHL worldwide. So it'll be close. Hubert O for the Panthers on the Dazzlers. Uh, Evans for the Habs on the Young Guns. Habs will have another good Young Gun next year. They have Romanov this year. They'll have uh, probably Caulfield next year if he gets a game in. I'm sure he will within the next year. Krejci for the Bruins. Tuka Rask for the Bruins on the portraits. Mm, last pack of the first half here. Come on, let's see. Let's see a laugh. We want to see a laugh here. Peyton Krabs. I again like him. Good player, value wise. Not there. Probably the second best young gun though, if out of the two boxes. So. All right. Next up. I mean, a Young Gun exclusives could also swing it. Could also swing it. Uh, Kivaranta for the Stars on the Young Guns. Again, solid one. And we have a clear cut coming up. That might just be a base though. Yep, Connor Brown for the Senators on the clear cut base. So those cancel each other out. So it's, it's literally going to come down to laugh plus, I guess, at this point, or like a better young gun parallel, but I don't think we can hit the French parallel in this box. Yossi predominant for the Predators. And we already hit a clear cut, so I don't think we'll hit a clear cut. Um, we're looking for the Blue Jackets on the canvas. I don't think we'll hit a clear cut Young Gun in this, so it's gonna take literally an exclusive or a good Young Gun canvas and a laugh. Uh, portraits of Yossi for the Predators. But I don't know, I'm not liking the odds right now. 
Not liking the odds. We're getting down towards the end of the box here. Debut dates of Morgan Frost for the Flyers. Got, this is what, six packs left? Just six packs left here. Oh, uh, actually, short print insert here. These are tough to hit. Ceremonial puck drops for Ottawa of Chris Phillips. These are uh, one in about a thousand packs. So again, not the most valuable pull, but honestly, really, really tough to hit card. All right, the laugh, uh, the laugh makes things interesting. It might make it even. And that's like being very optimistic. All right, we'll get one more stand up on the series one side because technically series two is uh, crushing it, but there we go. Get that out of the way. Goes there, there we go. So what are the odds on that? I think it's one in 1,000. Um, oh no, one in two, uh, 2880, so 2880. So one in 10 cases on those. So really tough to hit. There are autograph variations, but again, they're even tougher to hit. So like, don't ever expect them. All right, there we go. Uh, good one here, Jason Robertson for the stars on the young guns. He is climbing up in value. I guess a decent, yeah, decent young gun exclusives would actually probably swing this in, uh, in the favor of series one. That's literally like, they need a laugh right now. I think a laugh and I can say it's, uh, edge to series one, but there we go. Uh, ben Bishop for the stars on the worldwide. But without that, Byram would mean, I think the Byram is better than his program of excellence. But yeah, it's it's going to take, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it's got what it takes, but we'll see. Uh, Jason Robertson for the stars on the rookie portraits. Sorry, the base is all really annoyingly stuck together here. Or like a day with the cup flashbacks could get it done. But I don't think you'll get one when you have a ceremonial puck drop. Uh, Frank Coos for the avalanche. So again, like good young gun. This has been a really solid box top to bottom. But I don't know why I top loaded that one right away but I don't think it's gonna be enough. I don't think you can say it beat, beat Stutzla and the Byron program of excellence. The fluorescence is beat, as far as I'm concerned. The fluorescence is well destroyed. But yeah, goose up for the devils on the canvas. I, I, like, I can't in good faith say that uh, series one even tied that. So uh, it's four nothing series two. Series two is just running away with the ball game at this point. Like the Phillips is a really cool card. It's one of the toughest cards to hit, but like it just doesn't doesn't come close. If we go by the toughest card to hit, series one wins that one. And I guess technically series one wins the uh worldwide on the dry saddle. But unfortunately I don't think that's what we're gonna go by here. So All right, well, let's just have some good boxes to that. Like that was a good, that was a solid box. All the young guns were like pretty solid. And like, it's just, you know, it just doesn't have that high end player. It's kind of almost a role reversal between the products, really. All right, here we go. Blue of Burdeen for the Jets. Let's see, so we've hit Sutsa, we've hit Kaprizov, we've hit a Hoaglander canvas, we've hit a Romanov canvas, we've hit a Cousins. Keandre Miller is probably the last big one, I think. Uh, Zamula for the Flyers. Nice, congrats on the PS5 pickup. 
I'll need to get one at some point, but I am not in a rush. I don't really play a lot. Oh my gosh, is this? Oh, this could be Crawley, I guess. But yeah, Crawley for the Rangers on the Young Guns. I think Andre Miller is the last one. Um, last of the big ones, I think, from Series 2 that we haven't got yet. So, you know, really, like, Series 2 has just crushed it. Taste for Chicago on the canvas and Tara Vinen for the Canes on the Dazzlers. Couple. Oh, here we go. Next young gun. Mitchell or... Oh, no. Legison for the Oilers. Avoided us in our case yesterday. But here he is today. We actually pulled his... I think we pulled his clear cut Monday. I think we pulled it Monday. Here's a red. Uh, well, we pulled it yesterday, and we pulled it again today. Red OPG rookie of Laugh for the Rangers. So a nice little, about 30, I'd say $30 card. And it bumps the bellows off. I'm sorry, bellows. You get you get knocked off. Laugh, you get to go there. I like that the fluorescence is probably the quote-unquote tougher card to hit but i just i like the um the laugh too much well there's a base romanov for the habs that's another uh another solid young gun it's just it's just i i don't know how series one's gonna beat this again oh like a laugh young guns equals that and the romanov and the laugh red so i i don't see how it's gonna win at this point, we're looking at a sweep of uh, Regula for Chicago. And, like, the box of the Series 1 haven't been that bad. They've been solid. Like, we've hit all the solid young guns. It's just, you know, Series 2 just bringing the heat. Tampa Bay, uh, Stanley Cup winners, award winners, OPG update. Uh, BGB, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We do four breaks right now. Uh, it kind of changes. I'll try to get to updating the... Um, the stream schedule on twitch but next week is also going to be the same days uh for now so uh dylan coughlin for vegas on the young gun canvas hat trick in the game that he scored his first goal as a defenseman pretty special feat there yeah this has been just a crazy break uh bell's heel for the habs on the marquee rookie Like, Series 2 has just crushed it. Joseph Wool for the Leafs on the retro. But again, like, Series 1, a lot of the cards that we pulled, like, we pulled a lot of really good young guns. We haven't hit the top end guys, but we've hit a lot of the really solid ones. So, Stuart Skinner for the Oilers on the young guns. So, again, it hasn't been bad. Oh, for sure. Yeah, every uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time uh we'll be doing basketball and football next week and two hockey uh frank who's for colorado on the portraits basketball will be uh mosaic mix go zion hunting football is going to be the same break as uh last week well there's a laugh regular rookie regular opg rookie uh he's just in the young gun pile we'll just leave him after but just in the young gun pile that's a pile that I sleep and top load individually, so like guaranteed individual sleep and top loader. So but yeah, definitely nice having you. Again, even if you're not in breaks, just coming around and viewing stuff, chatting hockey cards, always welcome here. It's all about just having fun, having a good time, enjoying the hobby in the way that you want to type of thing. So uh, Nelson for the Islanders on the canvas. Next up, Sen for the Devils. Uh, did we hit a French? No, we haven't hit a French variation yet, I don't think. Should be coming up soon. Uh, McLeod on the retro for the Oilers. Uh, Burdine for the Jets on the rookie. Yeah, the Jets just like, they just 
quietly amass some rookies. <laughs> they don't really have anyone good, but they just they get rookies. Uh, Ant Whistle for Chicago on the rookie portraits and Sebastian Ajo on the French variation base for the Hurricanes. So this box, ironically, like it is beatable still, but it it's tough. Lorenz for the Hurricanes on the Young Guns. Like Romanov, you need Byram. You need Byram for sure. Uh, Bergeron for the Bruins on the canvas. Two more packs from this box. I can't forget about the random either. It's an easy random to forget about. Uh, Pogansky for the Blues on the Young Guns. And Jersey card to finish things off for the box. Ingram for the Predators. Slide that right in the middle there. There we go. So, solid box. Um, it's beatable. It is beatable. And that is all that Series 1 needs. Series 1 needs some hope right now. Because it is uh, not looking great. But... <laughs> Like, it's just been an insane, insane Series 2 box after insane Series 2 box. Like, our our worst box is probably going to end up being the the Romanov, or no, Romanov canvas was with Stutzla. What was the first box? The first box was, who did we hit in the first box? Sorokin and, I forget what else we hit in there. We hit, I think, a Fluorescence as well. But, like, it was solid. All right, come on, Series 1, let's see something big. Let's get something big. You may not win the war, but you can win the battle type of thing, right? Or you may not win the battle, but you can win the war. Let's get like a laugh exclusives or something. Something crazy. Hurdle for the Sharks. Byram Young Gun exclusives, Robertson Young Gun exclusives, Krebs, any, like, any decent Young Gun exclusives. Uh, Patrick Kane for Chicago on the predominant. There we go. Evans for the Habs on the rookie portraits. Uh, Samsonov on the debut dates for the Capitals. Uh, Nick Suzuki for the Habs on the canvas. Habs seem to have a lot of stuff this break. I mean, they've also had some big cards too, so. Shane Bowers for the Avalanche on the Young Guns. Solid one. I'd say solid. Alexiev for the Capitals on the Young Guns. Yeah, been a really good break. Again, thank you all for coming out, having some fun, uh, you know, kicking around in chat or just watching the break. Definitely always fun and always appreciate the support. So Grubauer for the Avalanche on the Worldwide. Uh, looking forward to, you know, trade deadline in a, a little bit over a week now, 10 days. That's kind of the next big NHL calendar thing. So hurdle for the Sharks on the Dazzlers. Bergeron for the Bruins on the portraits. Uh, so the flag cards are like, some aren't cut. The, the base ones are not. 
uh, Coughlin for Vegas on the Young Gun. So like, here, where's the uh, Grubauer? So like, it's just got Sky in the background. So they're easier to just, like they'll look better displayed. I, I like the die cuts just cause they, they're cool. But yeah, I can see, like die cuts are typically like, if they're done well, they're cool. Um, burns for the sharks like those ones I think are done pretty well the bottom like the bottom part is a weird part for me on those but yeah uh, Jersey card who's it gonna be Dylan Strom for Chicago god it's not looking not looking great but again all it takes is a laugh a laugh and uh, I think we've got a win here we'll call it a win if we get a laugh for series one. Debut dates of Ferraro for the Sharks. Next Young Gun coming up. Let's see. Well, it's not laugh, but it's pretty solid. Bowen Byram, so that equals, uh, that equals Romanoff. Um, you know, it's it's closer. I would say it's closer. It equals Romanoff. Still need still need something big though. Patterson for the Canucks on the portraits. Still need something big. At least I think. Uh, Quinn Hughes for the Canucks on the debut dates. Ooh, we got a young gun canvas coming up. This is a chance. There it is for the New York Rangers Lafreniere young gun canvas. Well, there's a win for series one. Uh, just like his game on top of the Giants connection, so. Really, really solid player. All right, Laugh, you're bumping yourself off. There we go. We have, we finally have a win. Congrats to uh, Chris on that one. We finally have a Series 1 win. All it took was a Laugh Young Gun canvas and a Byram Young Gun. So like literally the two best rookies in the set. <laughs> and an Ottinger for the stars on the Young Guns. God, these are just stuck. I mean, at least it's not a shutout, right? But yeah, really solid box there, so. Uh, John Carlson for the Capitals on the portraits. Whew. And sometimes you just never know. You can count the product out, but sometimes it just hops right back up and it's like, no, I'm good. I've been good the whole time. Jonas Johansson for the Sabres on the Young Guns. Uh, probably one that, I mean, he just doesn't really look like an NHL goalie. Hopefully you can turn it around, but... In Buffalo, he looked rough, although that was Buffalo. And in uh, Colorado, he didn't look great either. So Sagan for the Stars on the canvas. Two packs to go here. Well, we get to end off by starting on a box of Series 1, which is nice. <laughs> Carter Hart for the Flyers on the predominant. And last pack of the box. Congratulations to Series 1. Yeah. Got your first win of the battle. And we got an exclusives coming up here, so. Of Matthew Kachuk for the Flames uh, to 13. Put that in there. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a series one win there. All right. Uh, I mean, Hall should get traded at the deadline. For how much is going to be the interesting part. But, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it'd, it'd be really silly. 
the only the only way you justify keeping him is if you're really superstitious because you're in the draft lottery so that was the only way you justify keeping taylor hall and i mean if the best return that you're gonna get is like a third round pick or like then you know what i might actually just keep him at that point uh but yeah we'll see all right series one let's uh let's end on a big note here been again it's been a really solid break so top to bottom lots of good stuff french variant of ryan ellis actually i'm gonna just sleeve in that way i don't get confused with the kachuk kachuk with a uh regular young gun i'm just gonna sleep and top load it God, the packs just leave stuff all over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't draft later than third overall, but at the same time, like, you know, you still want that first overall pick. Although this year might be the one year that you're not like super crazy about it. Crosby on the predominant for the Penguins. Like honestly, yeah, if there is gonna be a year where it's like, okay, don't really care as much about having first overall, it's probably this year. Samula so for the Flyers. The new draft lottery rules like are stupid and don't really do anything. <laughs> they, if anything, they encourage tanking more. So Pashnak for the Bruins. I love how it's like anti-tanking, but at the same time, like. It rewards tanking more so i don't know i mean the only solution is just to get rid of the nhl entry draft to like fix it kind of but zuccarello for the wild because like any other method for example there's like the gold method is regularly trotted out but like the thing that sucks about the gold method is that if you're a bad team um like just because you know you went all in flurry for the vegas golden knights and like you know you have a couple good rookies on your team something like that and you're out of the playoffs fairly early so you declare for the draft and then you have your best player get injured bodan for chicago like if your wins after that like it's going to be tough to win games because your biggest players go out and like as a fan experience and as a team experience, that's infinitely like more frustrating than anything else. Oh, next year's not this year's draft, but next year's drafts is just stupid. Kucherov for the Lightning. So if teams are smart at the deadline, they're trying to pick up 2022 first. McKinnon for the Avs on the Dazzlers. Next up, Bertuzzi for the Red Wings. After that, another young gun. We still haven't pulled a regular laugh. It'd be nice to get one. Joseph Vol for the Leafs. Again, Leafs goalie is not the worst to get. Because if they do pop up and have a good performance, their value skyrockets. So. so much packs slavin for the hurricanes doing the storm surge this has been a quieter box but can all change with all it takes is one card a little chagrin for the leafs on the young guns be interesting to see if he changes teams i i think he's probably ready for the opportunity so you know, for the right price, I'd be in on. I'd be in on Timothy. Another die cut, I think, coming up. Maybe not. Maybe just a jersey. Yep, Ekman Larson for the Yotes on the jersey. Next up, Bertuzzi for the Red Wings on the predominant. Uh, 
Uh, Kiefer Bellows for the Islanders on the rookie portraits. Bases all sticking together here. Ah, there we go. Debut dates of Nick Suzuki for the Habs. And I hate when the base sticks together. There we go. That should help a little bit. Just like the most annoying, annoying, annoying thing. Another young gun canvas coming up. Well, it can't probably can't be left. Zamula for the Flyers. Not who you're looking for, but it's a bonus young gun. We take those. Definitely a uh, weaker box so far, but again, all it takes is one good young gun. It's all it takes is one good young gun. And Connor Ingram's solid, but he's not gonna, you know, tilt the box in your favor. So. All right, next pack. We've got McKinnon Worldwide for the apps. And then four packs to go here. I think we have one, maybe, I think we have one young gun left. This pack doesn't want to open. We have an exclusives. We have two young guns left, but I think we have one for sure. Ooh, we have an autograph of Chris Dreiger for the Panthers. There you go, Florida. Get a nice little autograph in here, case hit. I really like the design of the uh, signature sensations from this year. Probably the best design they've had. Ted, there you go. Florida's honestly like not horrible either. They, especially with series two, they have a couple of young guns and they can kind of strap together some value quickly. So Dredger's looking good though. Connecting for the Flyers, obviously with uh, Spencer Knight signing there, that goaltending situation is going to be very interesting because you've got Bobrovsky who is on that massive contract. Uh, Evans for the Habs on the young gun. So really weak box young gun wise, to be honest. I'm actually gonna just go back and look through it because that was uh, honestly probably the weakest young gun box I've seen in series one. Rangers on the Kreider canvas. Like, who did we get? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess Logegrin's our best one. Not ideal. I thought he was gonna be, uh, to be fair, Thought he was going to be a bit more of an impact player this year than what he ended up being, but, you know. It is what it is. All right, base is tucked away. That's a lot of base. And the home stretch. Last box here. Again, thank you, everyone, for coming out. I'm just going to switch the team vigor and get a quick sip of water here. Ugh. Oh. Final box. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, honestly, like the Rangers hit, so even if they don't get a Keandre Miller, still did well. But, like, let's just see something massive. Just want to end on a big note, cause like this is gonna be five one for. It's gonna be five one for series two. <laughs> it is. All but ridden, essentially, at this point. So, uh, which one? Harkins for the Jets on the portraits. Yeah, this is all but pretty much over. It's five one for the. It's gonna be five one for series two. Sharon Govich for the Devils. Like that's legitimately probably the best young gun. Probably tied with Lilligren, I guess, but. Yeah, it's uh, that wasn't a great box of series one. Shea Theodore for Vegas and retired canvas of Charlie Simmer for the Kings. So already, I mean, the autograph is nice and all, but you know, already those cards are probably on par, honestly, the Simmer and the uh, autograph. Next up. Oh, there's a whole glander base. So, yep. 5 1 Series 2. Chalk it up. It's over. That was a bloodbath and a half. It's really weird, though, because I think Series. No, uh, Series 1, we 
The average young gun in Series 1 is probably better, but the average top end young gun in Series 2 was just... It just wasn't close, really. Brock Besser on the Pink Dazzlers for the Canucks. So, heck of a break for a lot of the teams in here that had top young guns. Uh, you love to see it, because, you know, that way all the top teams get stuff. Uh, I think it's fairly even overall, too. There's obviously going to be some weaker teams, but... Blue of the award winners for the Lightning. Like, uh, Boston's probably weaker, but that is fixable. Calgary probably has a couple young guns. Actually, maybe not. Gross for the Yotes. Um, I mean, Ottawa did good. Montreal did good. LA did fine. They didn't do great, but they did fine. Uh, Detroit was kind of quiet. Uh, Kivlenix on the rookie for the Blue Jackets. Who else? Buffalo got the Cousins at the start, so they're fine. Vegas got Krebs, dry settle on the OPG. A little bit of a soft cut there on the side. That's very common with those. So uh, Vegas got Krebs, some Coughlin and stuff. Uh, Columbus has had a few young guns. Uh, Calgary, again, probably one of the weaker teams, but uh, Marner for the least. They, I think they might have hit one or two young guns. They've definitely got cards. Islanders hit Sorokin, so they're fine, and Bellows. Uh, Predators hit Ingram and Smith, so they're fine. Leafs have quantity. Devils, I think, did okay. Ustamenko for the Flyers. Uh, Ty Smith we could hit. But Devils got Sharon Go, which is well, so that's fine. Chicago, Chicago. Florida, you got an auto with. Colorado did great. Arizona did fine. Uh, Dumbbell on the award winners for the... The retro award winners for the Wilds. St. Louis, you got a clear-cut young gun. Carolina. Uh, Carolina was probably a little bit on the weaker side. Uh, no, I think you got a geeky, so you're fine there. Lynchum for the Red Wings on the portraits. Anaheim. I mean, I think you hit everything that you could expect to hit with Anaheim. Edmonton, you got the die cut of dry sidle, some decent young guns. Minnesota, you got Caprizo over there. Uh, Prisky for the Panthers on the rookie. Vancouver did well. Washington has enough volume. Rangers, I mean, you got the laugh and the laugh red. Winnipeg, about hit as many cards as you could expect for Winnipeg. Barkoff for the Panthers. Uh, Tampa Bay. Probably could have been slightly better, but not horrible. Uh, Pittsburgh, same thing. Could have been slightly better, but not horrible. Braden Burke for the Yotes. Flyers, uh, kind of the run of the mill. San Jose, probably run of the mill for them. Dallas, solid break. And then Boston is, you know, they probably did above average. So Ingram for the Predators on the retro. So for the most part, I think a lot of teams did like at expectations or above, which is good. Legacy for the Oilers. I don't know why I put the Kivlenix there. There we go. So for the most part, I think most teams are good. We got the one random to do. I can't forget about that. Almost did, but Zaga Doolin for the Flames. Between Ottawa and Calgary on the checklist. Latuna for the Sharks and French variation of Zach Aston Reese and his regular variation right behind it. Or reg not regular variation, but regular. So, pretty, pretty solid uh, break overall. Darren Radish for the Rangers. And three packs to go here. Honestly, bit of a quiet end, but you know, could, could still get one really good card in the end here. All right. Fiala for the wild. Two packs to go. Got a young gun coming up. Uh, Nizov for the sharks. And last pack. Again, thank you everyone for coming out. Pretty solid, honestly, like pretty solid break all around. Uh, definitely some good stuff. 
But finishing off with a clear cut base of Brent Burns for the Sharks. So we got the one random to do here. We'll get that done. Um, but yeah, overall fairly solid for six boxes of each. I mean, we covered most of the big rookies. The main one that we were missing, I think, the main two that we were missing from Series 2 were Ty Smith and Keandre Miller. But no, outside of that, it was really good. Like, you really can't be disappointed with what's up in the top row and everything else. So, uh, random do on the checklist between Ottawa and Calgary. I'll get that set up here in one second. We'll do that. Uh, breaks for next week. Might I don't know exactly what day they'll be posted on, but uh, just stay tuned to your emails. So, uh, like I said, two hockey, uh, one football, one uh, basketball next week. So, Calgary, Calgary, Ottawa, Ottawa. All right, uh, three times for the canvas checklist. Here we go. Once, twice, and third time. Well, Ottawa, have yourself a little bit of a break. So that one goes to the Senators. Um, yeah, really, like, honestly, Series 2 crushed it. Series 1, I mean, from six boxes, getting a laugh. Uh, Young Gun Canvas is solid along with, like, the Chris Phillips is a cool card as well. So uh, it won't have the highest sale value, but it's just a really rare card. Uh, Byram Young Gun, Krebs, like we hit most of the big Young Guns and honestly from six boxes of each product, like you're not guaranteed to. So um, overall just really good and love the program of excellence, Byram. That's probably my favorite card from the break. So uh, anyways, thank you everyone for coming out. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I will see you next week for the next breaks. Take care.